Alright, so here we have an RLC circuit. Now let's say that we wanted to find the voltages across each of these nodes, labeled A, B, C, and D. We know that the voltage will drop. So it's a difficult problem if you don't know where to look initially. In order to do this problem, we have to think about what's common across each of these nodes. Well, because this is in series, the current is common. So now I'll move this box out of the way. And you'll see here that we have the resistance as a vector and the reactance from the inductor and the reactance from the capacitor as vectors as well. The reactances are orthogonal to the resistance. Here, reactants from the inductor and the in reactants from the capacitor are in opposite directions. Now, that makes sense because the behavior of an inductor and the behavior of a capacitor are pretty much polar opposites. So let's say we wanted to find out a total kind of resistance. Well, what we do is we'd add up all of these vectors and Let's say that at a particular moment, the reactance from the inductor is greater than the reactance from the capacitor. We'd subtract this from this, and we'd overall get a shape that looks something like this. Now this red line, this red vector, is called the impedance. And usually we represent it, we represent it with a letter Z. So, if we want to find the peak current across the circuit, that would be voltage divided by the impedance. Now, you should be familiar with I equals V over R. Here we have this sort of practical resistance of sorts, and that is what we're dividing the voltage by. So here we have V divided by the sum of the vectors. So, now that we have this, Let's say you want to find the average current. Well, to get the RMS value, you simply divide by square root 2. So, let's say you want to find the voltage from A to B. That would simply be I times R. Or if you're doing the average, it would be I times R divided by square root 2. Let's say you wanted to do the voltage across B and C. Well, that will simply be I times XL or if you're doing average, I times XL divided by square root 2, and the same follows for D, I times XC, or I times XC divided by square root 2. I hope that was helpful. Before I leave, let's think about what the voltage across AC would be, or the voltage across BD would be. Well, very simply, that's just the voltage drops added together. So voltage drop AB, plus voltage drop BC will be the voltage drop across AC. Voltage drop across BC plus the voltage drop across CD is the voltage drop across BD. And finally, voltage drop from A to D is the sum of each of these voltage drops.